Make sure corners. Make him work here. Give him a look. Elijah, give him a look. Don't get blocked. I mean, definitely kind of uh, changed uh, my perspective and kind of changed my world upside down. And you, you kind of don't know what to really what to do and how to act. Mark is back on the field after being diagnosed with rhabdomyosarcoma, a rare cancer that usually affects children under the age of 10. The doctors, when I was first diagnosed, they didn't know much about it. And so they didn't give me much like hope uh, to beat the thing initially. And nobody took the news harder than Mark's sister, Michelle. It was probably the worst day of my life, um, our family's life, really. Eventually, Mark would undergo surgery to remove the cancerous cells. And shortly thereafter, began a six-month period of chemotherapy treatment. I mean, you're sick, fatigued, tired, I mean, constantly for about six months. And you can't do much, you can't, you can't do much in your room, you don't want to do much. So it was kind of a, it wasn't a fun time in my life. With Mark finding it hard to walk, and unable to stay on his feet for more than 30 minutes at a time, Michelle came to her brother's aid. She came over and brought her two my two nephews over, and so I spent a lot more time with them than I have ever. You are just completely, you just feel completely helpless, and you're watching your brother go through chemo treatments and what that does to his body and his frame of mind and then, and then the radiation. Nothing's guaranteed, you never know what's gonna happen, so it kind of, uh, got us back down to reality that, hey, we got to enjoy each other and kind of family comes first and whatever happens after that, happens. The feeling of helplessness is just overwhelming, so I felt like I had to do something. That something would eventually become the Ramstrong Foundation, a fund that assists Fort Collins residents that are battling cancer. My brother was reading the Lance Armstrong book at the time, It's Not About a Bike, and he was very inspired. That was, I think, the first thing that he read that gave him hope, so then I read it. I mean, she got real fired up about it just because uh, she saw what I was going through. I went on the Live Strong website and found they had a race here in Denver, you know, on August 20th. I said, heck, that'd be a great way to show my support for Mark because we'll do that race and maybe raise a little bit of money. It was amazing the people that uh, would show their support. And I mean, the community was, was absolutely awesome. I'd get, I mean, I get probably a thousand letters of people that I've never, never met. And then it just, you know, snowballed and so many people wanted to get behind it and show their support, but um, that's really, really stemmed from me just feeling helpless watching my younger brother go through this experience and there was nothing I could do to protect him. Ramstrong to me is just our chance uh, to make a difference and fight this disease. With Mark's cancer in remission and Ramstrong thriving, things are going better than anyone could have ever hoped. I never would have thought I'd be spearheading something as great as Ramstrong, but it really has just made me realize that, you know, when you have passion about something and when you believe so strongly in your heart about something that you can accomplish anything. Coaching was my whole deal, my whole life, and just kind of living to coach and getting consumed with that and not worry about anything else. And this kind of shows you that, hey, there's more important things in this world than coaching football.